Saturday, July 2, the police registered five violent deaths in separate events, this Saturday, in Rio Grande, San Juan, and Toa Baja, Puerto Rico. The 911 emergency system alerted police to gunshots fired, on Parque Sur Street, in Toa Baja. Upon arriving at the scene, agents came across a triple murder, a woman and two men were shot to death, inside a car. A 2017 red Toyota Yaris was found at the scene. Inside, were the lifeless bodies of the three people. The woman was driving, while one of the men was a passenger, and the other in the back seat, Commander Jose Aroco, Deputy Director of Police Criminal Investigations, explained to the media. The three deceased, according to the officer, had multiple bullet wounds. The car had over 100 bullet holes. What the scene shows us, is that the shooters, were possibly people on foot. There are more than a hundred shell casings, detailed Commander Aroko by telephone. We do not know what the motive for the crime was. When asked about the ages of the victims, the official said, they look like they're all adults. The crime was next to the park, so we are investigating if there was any activity in this park yesterday, he said. Another violent death was recorded early Saturday morning, in Rio Grande, Puerto Rico, the police reported. According to the preliminary report, a call to the 911 emergency system alerted authorities to a suspicious situation. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a man shot to death. The deceased was identified as Eric Samuel Gonzalez Benitez, 28 years old. Agents attached to the Homicide Division of the Criminal Investigation Corps of Fajardo, together with Prosecutor Juan Serrano, are investigating these events. A third case was recorded at 1.02 a.m., Saturday, on Roberto Sanchez Vilea Avenue, in Rio Piedras, in San Juan. At the scene, the authorities found a burning car, and when they extinguished the fire, they found a charred body inside. The death was classified as violent, and it is still unknown how the events occurred. The victim has also not been identified. According to the police, with these five violent deaths, the total number of murders reported so far this year, increased to 297, two cases less than those reported for the same date last year. Also last Saturday, the police investigated the violent death of a young man, identified as Michael Y. Martinez Rodriguez, 19 years old, and a resident of Salinas, Puerto Rico, which occurred in front of the Brisas del Mar residential complex. According to the preliminary report, the murder was reported at 9.47 p.m. A call through the 911 emergency system alerted the police to several gunshots that were heard at the scene. When the agents arrived, they were told that the victim was transported to the Sur Med Hospital in the same municipality. After the victim arrived, Dr. Baez certified his death. The deceased had gunshot wounds to various parts of the body. July 3rd, two young people were shot to death, at around 10.30 p.m. Sunday, in front of a residence on Andres Arus Street, in Carolina. According to preliminary information, a call to 911 alerted the authorities about shots fired. Upon arrival, police officers found the bullet-ridden bodies of two young men, identified as Ari Berto Lopez Eraldo and Alvin Canales Escaleras, both 20 years old. Another man was wounded by a bullet in his thigh. The victim was treated in the emergency room of an area hospital, and at the moment, his condition is unknown. Severe weather dominated the news this 4th of July weekend, as the long-running drought was ended by torrential rains. Flash flooding caught some motorists off guard, as their vehicles were caught in rapidly rising waters. A few homes were swamped by rising creeks and streams. The El Yunque rainforest revealed nature's force and beauty, as the waterfalls raged from the downpours.
Friday, July 1, the intense search by air, sea and land, carried out by federal and state authorities, for 23-year-old Harold Carion Butter, who was thought to have drowned, on the Posa del Obispo Beach, in Arcebo, Puerto Rico, cost over $1.2 million, according to estimates by the Emergency Management and Disaster Administration Bureau. The search for the young man began last Tuesday at 7.45 p.m., after his mother, just Anita Butter Torres, reported the possibility that her son may have drowned on the beach. However, the young man appeared this Friday, in an abandoned structure, in a public park, in the Garcia de Arecibo neighborhood. The young man had a domestic violence charge against him. He told police he was distraught that he could not see his children. The largest expense was incurred by the Coast Guard. The Federal Agency Search and Rescue Coordinator, Alberto Martinez, said that the activation averaged an expense of more than $1 million. These are the types of vessels, and the types of resources that we use, he said. He added, that they put into operation a plane, that left Miami, two helicopters from the Aguadilla area, and three vessels that left San Juan. For his part, the Commissioner of the National Emergency Management Agency, Nino Coria, pointed out that the agency incurred an expense of over $200,000 for the activation of personnel, chaplains and divers, for the search at sea. These are services that are given to the community. We do it because we are here, and it doesn't matter what the cost is. Putting a resource to save a life is priceless, he added. However, legislation is being evaluated to establish whether some type of recovery can be established, when a person causes an intense mobilization, after false testimony. July 2nd, agents of the police department captured one of the most wanted in Caguas, Puerto Rico, Saturday. Jan Pierre Santiago Rios, is charged with murder, and violations of the arms law. Bail was set at $2.5 million. Agent Omar Marrero, from the Auto Ray Command Press Office, stated the crimes imputed to Jan Pierre Santiago Rios occurred on February 27, 2020, in a business in Garaba, Puerto Rico. The preliminary report maintains that Santiago Rios was in a Rincon liquor store and, for unknown reasons, murdered Oscar Perez Picarelli with a firearm. On March 10, 2020, the Caguas Prosecutor's Office filed charges against Santiago Rios and his alleged accomplices Jose Rodriguez Cruz and Carlos Silva Suarez, for the death of Perez Picarelli. Judge Glenn Velasquez Morels found cause for arrest, and set a global bail of $6.5 million. Wednesday, June 29th, an agent, of the Department of Justice, was accused of sexually assaulting a young woman of legal age, who, according to information provided by the agency, was the girlfriend of her partner's son. Felix Jose Urbez Baguero, 56, is accused of the crime of lascivious acts, for which the case was filed. The man was released on a supervised release. Judge Rafael J. Pere, of the Bayamon Court, found cause for his arrest, and set a $20,000 bail. Presently, the accused remains under electronic supervision, until July 14, when the preliminary hearing will be held. Tuesday, June 28, a 20-year-old man was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison, after being convicted of a murder that occurred in 2019, in San Germán, Puerto Rico, reported the police. Mayaguez court found Jets and Rosario Martinez, guilty on charges of first-degree murder, attempted murder, and violations of the arms law. April 29, 2019, according to the investigations, Rosario Martinez, together with other people, shot towards a vehicle, in which Andres Lozada Zapata, 25, and his girlfriend were sitting. Andres Lozada Zapata, died, after receiving bullet wounds to the head. Meanwhile, his girlfriend sustained several bullet wounds that affected the left side of her body. According to the police record, the convicted man was 16 years old, at the time of the events. Sunday July 3rd, singer Ricky Martin has rejected as completely false, allegations from an unnamed individual, that led to Puerto Rican authorities issuing a restraining order against him, under the U.S. Territory's domestic violence laws. 
According to Puerto Rican newspaper, El Vocero, the unnamed petitioner went to the court directly, without filing a police complaint, after ending a seven-month relationship with Martin. The newspaper cited a court document as saying, Martin, who's been married to husband Juan Yosef, since 2017, had refused to accept the petitioner's decision to break up. The person claimed, Ricky Martin continued to make frequent, unwanted contact. Martin said in a tweet, that the order was based on completely false allegations, and he vowed to face them with the responsibility that characterizes me. Monday, July 4, the government of Puerto Rico called for equal rights, through the annexation of the island with the United States, in the municipality of Catano, this weekend. As part of the activities, in commemoration of July 4, Governor Pedro Pierluisi proclaimed in a speech, the need for equality for all Puerto Ricans, living on the island. For 123 years the American flag has flown on our land, and for 105 years we have been American citizens. And, since then, we are immersed in the fight for full democracy, he pointed out. I have highlighted that brothers and sisters have contributed, and continue to contribute to the United States, where more than 5 million Puerto Ricans reside. The most important contribution, however, are the men and women who wear, and wore the uniform of the United States Armed Forces. They have always served with distinction, and in numbers greater than almost all the states of the American Union, he said. On June 27, 2018, the Puerto Rico Admission Act of 2018, was introduced in the U.S. House, with the purpose of responding to, and complying with, the democratic will of the United States citizens residing in Puerto Rico, who voted 61% for statehood on November 6, 2012, and June 11, 2017, by setting forth the terms for the admission of the territory of Puerto Rico as a state of the Union. The Admission Act has 37 original co-sponsors between Republicans and Democrats, in the U.S. House of Representatives. Benefits of statehood include, an additional $10 billion per year in federal funds, the right to vote in presidential elections, higher Social Security and Medicare benefits, and a right for its government agencies and municipalities to file for bankruptcy, which could help solve Puerto Rico's overwhelming debt problem. Some disadvantages of statehood could be, paying federal taxes, as Puerto Rico already has high territorial and sales tax, statistics will be altered, as Puerto Rico has 41% poverty rate, compared to US 13%, Puerto Rico will no longer have separate representation at the Olympics, Puerto Rico will become an English-speaking state, and Puerto Rico may become a blue or democratic state, and a threat to the GOP strongholds. The bill was introduced on March 16, 2021. After being introduced, the bill was sent to the Senate parliamentarian who assigned it to a specific committee, for further deliberation. The Speaker of the House may set time limits on committees. Bills are placed on the calendar of the committee, to which they have been assigned. Failure to act on a bill is equivalent to killing it. Bills in the House can only be released from committee without a proper committee vote, by a discharge petition signed by a majority of the House membership, 218 members. Puerto Rico Statehood Admission Act is presently stalled in committee. Puerto Rico continues to spend millions of dollars every year lobbying for statehood. Wednesday, July 1, in 24 months from now, the sale and use of single-use plastics will be prohibited in Puerto Rico. Governor Pedro Pierluisi signed the law which recognizes the problem of plastic pollution, thus, it is established that, in two years, all commercial establishments on the island will cease the practice of delivering or using single-use plastics. Also, the wholesale and retail sale of these products will be strictly prohibited. Thanks for watching. Here's your weather for the week. Be sure and follow us on Facebook. Thanks for subscribing. Have an amazing week.